Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you this Friday. Praise God, today is Friday. Hey, this is the first Friday in the month of August. And I'll keep telling you this. God is planning something good for you. And that's the reason he's sending his word to you today. And I will encourage you this weekend, take time to listen to those messages again. And this month, I told you the Lord speaking about the manifestation of His love in your life. And I know His plan. He said it. I, Jeremiah told us that His plan concerning us, they are good and not evil. So God has good plans for you. And not only does He have good plans for you, He's gone beyond having the plans to manifesting the plans in your life. And that's what we're trusting the Lord. You will experience this month in your life. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? And now today is Friday, so we're making demands for the whole weekend. Praise God. Listen, release your faith right now because God is willing to do it. Join me in faith right now as we declare, say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now I began sharing with you from John chapter 15 and verse 8, specifically verse 8. Now the whole of John 15 is an amazing chapter of the Bible. You see, when, when Jesus is speaking, now one thing I love about John, I think 14, 15, 16 to 17 is that Jesus was kind of speaking uninterrupted. Now that's how John put the, the his writings together. Like Jesus was speaking uninterrupted. He, he was not answering the Jews like he does in other places or, or telling a parable or something. He was speaking his heart. He was speaking truth. So the things he said, and that's why I always said, if you want to understand the, the mind of Jesus, go study the book of John. John particular, and every other person have taken time to write the story of events that happened, you know, in the days of Jesus. Matthew did that, you know, Luke did that, even though he wasn't walking, he didn't see Jesus physically. He got born again later on through Paul's ministry. So, but then... He took time to ask the right questions as an intelligent man. So he decided to put the, put the events as he was told from different sources. Like he said, he says, look, that you may know the certainty of these things. So Luke took time to put out the stories and some of the teachings of Jesus. But John specifically wanted us to see the mind of Jesus. He wanted us to see what Jesus really came for. So John was particular about writing some things that other writers didn't write. Now, of course, I believe there are several writers, not just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I believe there are several writers. Maybe the other apostles wrote their books. We don't know. Now, get this right in your mind. It's not like Matthew God said, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I want you to write uh, the first um, books of the New Testament for me. And okay, yes, Lord. Then I got their pen. No, these were letters they were writing. See, they, they felt, look, these things we have experienced, it is important that we put it out there. See, like Luke was writing specifically to a, to a ruler named Theophilus. So he wrote the book of Luke, and then he wrote the book of Acts. After he wrote the book of Luke, he felt, okay, now I'm giving you the life of Jesus. Because actually, Luke wanted to write the book of Acts. But before writing the book of Acts, he needed to give a background of what is going on now. Now, I wonder if Luke should have been a doctor or a, or a historian, actually. Praise God. Maybe he studied medicine, but his calling was history. You understand what I'm talking about? So, because he, his presentation was very good and accurate. So actually, he wanted to write the book of Acts, but he felt writing the book of Acts will not tell the full story. So let me go down to the beginning of this thing. What we are experiencing today, let me write from where it began. 
That's why he, his story started from the very birth of Jesus Christ. You see? And not just the birth of Jesus, how the announcement of the birth of Jesus came. Praise God. Now, it's possible even Luke wrote other books that, are, that we have not read. It's possible. Now, that's not where we're going to praise God. But, but then, I said, John took time to write out, to tell us the mind of Jesus. And he, he wanted us to know that this Jesus, his mind is the same mind of God. So, he was always bringing out the divinity of Jesus. That was his concern. So, every story that John is talking about, he wants to bring out the, the, God, the God part of Jesus. Now, that's why John wrote the, about the marriage in Canaan of Galilee. But he, he was careful not to state who was getting married, praise God. Yeah, because that would have revealed the human side of Jesus because it was his sister that was getting married. That's why they were all there. So, John, was, was, he's like that in his writing. He was just concerned about, look, in that marriage, for example, what happened that revealed his divinity? He turned water into wine. That was the focus. The focus was not who's getting married or whose family wedding is it. His focus was just the, the miracle that took place in that place. So even the things Jesus taught, John was particular about when he was referencing the real thing that was in his heart. Now you find him writing here. It says, verse 8, John chapter 15. He said, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. If you bear much fruit, he says, my father will be glorified. And that's exactly how you too will show that you are my disciple. It doesn't mean, oh, no, no, okay, not only pastors, even cell leaders or... Uh, and departmental leaders. How many people do you have in your department? No, that's not what he wasn't talking about fruit as but people. No, sir. He was talking about love. That is the fruit that we have been called to bear. Now, God is love. See that? Now, when he says that you bear much fruit, what's he talking to? Not how many people you love. No. How much of God's love is manifested in your life? How much of God's love have you allowed to show forth in your life? Look at your life. How many things can you point to and clearly say, this thing came to me by the love of my father? How many things, look at your health, Look at your finances. Look at how since you got to know Jesus Christ and you began to walk with him, how many things, now this is serious, how many things can you tell that this came because of God's love for me? This understanding came. Now several people, all they know from the word of God or from scriptures is what their pastor have taught them. You're listening to them. You don't hear anything personal in them. How then can you prove that God loves you? I'm not talking about God loves me. Ah, every day I go out, I don't have accidents. It's God. It's only the love of God. There are unbelievers. There are people who curse God every day. They go out, they come back, and nothing happens. In fact, those ones will laugh at you. Say, come on, go away from there. Yeah. God loves me. That's why they've not sacked me from my job. Why? Even your boss may be a stark unbeliever. You see that now? But you see, there are events that would have happened in the job that would have made them suck you or, or let you go. But because of the demonstration of God's love, things turned around. You see that now? Now, that's what we're talking about. The content, that's why you know, I tell you most times, like when people share testimonies, it's always important we look for the testimony in the story. Some people share stories. They just share stories. No testimony. Testimony must be showing in that story the love of God. Praise God. You know, I've been without car all my life, but I got a new job. 
Ah, after three months, I was able to buy a car. Now I have a car. Praise God. Now that's a story. That's progress. Praise God for that. But that doesn't in itself prove the love of God in your life. Now, when you begin to tell us how the car came, and we are looking at your story, and we're like, wow, God loves you. You see that now? So when he says, by this, my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. He's talking about your testimonies in life. That's what he's referring to. So God is glorified in your life when there are so many testimonies. Now some people say, no, you know, let's not be concerned about physical things. Let's be concerned about spiritual things. For example, God has given you health. God has given you wisdom. God has given you joy. God has given you peace. Now, 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 you know, you see, I, let's not be, even Solomon said, he said, let's not be uh, over-religious. Get this thing straight in your mind. There's a difference between being covetous and being, um, being in, walking in truth. Being covetous is simply when you think by the physical things, you know, the things you possess, so you are made. You see that now? That's covetousness. But then also you need to walk in truth. Truth is God created a physical earth. He created a physical atmosphere for you to reign in. So when somebody starts saying, me, I don't concern myself with all those physical things, so hmm, whether I have a car or I don't have a car, it's not my business. Now, there is a place of contentment. Then there is a place of foolishness. There's a big difference between contentment and foolishness. A man can be contented. Why is he contented? He is contented as because this is what God has given to me, and I will enjoy it until he gives me the next one. Contentment. Contentment doesn't mean I don't have anything. Oh, that's how my life is. Me, I, I'm not envying anybody. Oh. You may just be foolish. You may just be one who's, 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 how do I put this now? You may just be one who's putting his inheritance away. See what I'm talking about? You may just be putting your inheritance away. So when people say, ah, don't bother about all those physical things. <laughs> it's a pity. It's a pity. So when we begin, well, no, when, when, God talk, when God talks about blessing, when God says, I will bless you, you need to understand what he's talking about. He's not talking about, oh, I will, I will give you one kind of spirit that you would, you know, you will lay hands on the sick and you will do all those spiritual things. Wonderful. Wonderful. But you see, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When God blesses you, when God says, I will bless you, when God says, I will bless you, what he is telling you in essence is I am taking the responsibility of your life. And listen, he is referring to, I am Nama Kose Yalda. He is, he is telling you, I'm going to take care of you. Take care of you how? Physically. Of course, life is lived from the spirit. But if the spirit does not manifest in the physical, then the circuit is not complete. If you say, oh, I'm only concerned about spiritual things. If you're deep in spiritual things, physical things will manifest. Yes, is the truth. You don't say, I carry so much healing anointing until you physically lay hands on someone and the person get healed. I get what I'm saying. So you, you can't just come and say, me, I, 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 believe, I only believe for, for spiritual things. So like, like now, the anointing God has given me so much, eh, it can heal any sick person. Okay, how many sick people have been healed? No, you know, you see, I don't want to be known. It's not like I don't, I don't, if you, I don't want to just, if I hold healing meeting now, people will gather and then they will not be praising me. You're foolish. You're foolish. Oh, I'm concerned about spiritual things. I just want to make heaven. I just want to make heaven. How would you make heaven when you're not like him? It is only those that are like him that will make heaven. Believe me, if you are not like Jesus, 
heaven is not a place for you. What do you think we are doing, all this work we are doing? And you can't claim to be like Jesus until you produce the same result that he is producing or he produced. And how did he produce those results? The father that dwells in me, I was sharing that with you yesterday, the father that dwells in me, he does the works. Huh? Yes. So, if one testifies that God gave him a car, now I'm not just saying he went to buy a car and come in to say God. No, you see his testimony that God truly gave him a car. You confirm that. Then another person is saying, me, I'm not concerned about all those things. So me, I just want to keep myself spiritual so that when Jesus comes, I'm going to make heaven. You might not. You might not. Because you have not explored everything that the Spirit of God can do for you. So you say, oh, no, see, see, I'm concerned about the gift of this, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy. I've told you the fruit of the Spirit is one, is love. And it's not how many people you love. It is how much of God's love is demonstrated or manifested through your life. So you look at yourself. Where is the love of God in your life? Where is it? Your life is from one struggle to the other, one struggle to the other, one struggle to the other, one struggle to the other. You're not learning anything. You're not growing in God concerning those things. Suffering in perpetuality is not God's will for your life. No, the, you know, the Bible called us to suffer. Yes, I understand that suffering, but it's not to suffer forever. That suffering, you know, you, you see, you know, some people just need to grow up. That suffering means, listen, I may have so much money that God has given to me, yet he controls what I use it on. Yes, I may have the money to buy the best car. But then I look at it, I say, this car is really nice. Lord, I'm thinking of buying this car. And the Lord said, no, don't buy it. Oh, okay. The Lord can tell you, don't buy, don't buy a car. Okay. So you have money too, but you don't do it. Not because you cannot do it, but then you're following the leading of the Lord. Now, that's suffering in itself. That's why it says we have been called to suffer with him. Jesus didn't go to Pilate or to, to those soldiers and say, slap me, beat me. No, it was a path he had to follow and he had to follow the leading of the Spirit of God in that path. So suffering is not that I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this, I cannot get this. No, suffering is strictly following the path that the Lord is sending you to follow. Or even though in your mind you see every other path to follow, but you chose to follow that narrow path. So outwardly, you are suffering, but inwardly, you are following the joy of the Lord and the word of God is being fulfilled in your life. Praise God. My time is up. Hey, listen. The Spirit of God is going to so demonstrate His love in your life this month. Now, that's why I'm beginning talking to you about this. And listen, this weekend, miracles are going to take place in your life. And when they do, I want to hear from you. Praise God. Hey, join our Telegram group, the Complete Church Community. And, and listen, we're going to be starting some uh, some programs. I'm going to be uh, having some dealings on that group. I want you to be part of it. So if you haven't, look for the link under this video and join. Praise God. I'll see you on Monday. Until then, have the best weekend ever. Bye.